Hey, welcome to the final episode in this series about recording an album in the home studio. In the previous episodes, we looked at how to record, mix and master onto tape, and today we're looking at the duplication process onto cassette tape. All the songs for the album have been masked onto VHS tape, so the next step is to create the cassettes for distribution and release. I'm going to use my Technics 3-head deck to make the tapes and have bought a batch of cassettes for the final product. I ordered these tapes from a company called Retro Style Media in the UK as they had a good range of lengths and styles. They are high quality ferret cassettes and are 30 minutes long which is the perfect length for our album. In a professional duplication studio they'd have large machines that are capable of high speed dubbing on an industrial scale. These duplication studios used to be commonplace in the height of cassette production in the 80s and 90s, but are slightly rarer these days. We want to do a limited edition run though, so I reckon a standard deck will be fine. I'll do all the reproduction at standard speed, which should result in better audio quality than doing fast speed dubbing on a consumer deck. I'll start by running through how I've got everything set up. I'm taking a stereo feed from the VCR into the mixer. The signal is then sent out to the inputs of my three head Technics tape deck. The bonus of using a three head deck is you can listen back to the live recorded audio and make sure everything sounds okay as you go along. All right, let's pop in the VHS tape. I've not used these tapes before, so let's record a short test to see how they sound and check if I have to make any adjustments on the mixer. Right, let's get into record mode. Record and play. And then very importantly, you have to change from monitoring the source to tape. You can hear a bit of hiss from the tape there. Hopefully that will be covered by the audio. And let's turn up the mixer channel. So we've got the audio coming through. Right, and let's press play on the VCR. That sounds a bit muffled to me, so I'm gonna boost the high end on the mixer. Hopefully that's a bit better. Lost in your reflection, got nowhere to go. Wishing I could be there, it's all I've ever known. I picked myself up off the floor. I tried to Well, that sounds about right. I had to boost it a little bit to get to hit zero dB. Uh, I may adjust that on the mixer later on so I can do it from the gain from the mixer rather than the tape deck because that'll probably be a little bit cleaner. So I'm now going to record the whole cassette. I'll play back a couple of clips so you can get an idea how it sounds. Well, let's give it a take. Great, well that's the first cassette finish. I'm now going to add the J card and the stickers. Now the design for this was a liner print I made myself, which relates to some of the imagery and ideas I was exploring with the songs on the album. My brother, who's a graphic designer, adapted the image into the right format for a J card, which I can then print out on thick cartridge paper, score the seams and cut out the covers. If you're doing this yourself, it's way easier to fold the J card once it's been scored. I also bought these sticker templates which I can pop onto the tape. So here's the first cassette all finished. Now I'm gonna do a limited edition of 10 of these tapes. So if you wanna hear it in the analog domain, I'll put a link in the description so you can get one. If you don't own a cassette player or wanna buy a tape, the single Going Home is also available on all the usual streaming platforms. 
Now, it's certainly been quite a time-consuming process making a triple A album, and I've enjoyed the challenges along the way. I mean, it's certainly not been straightforward at some points. Probably the hardest thing I found was getting the mastering right on the VHS, because if you get it wrong, you kind of got to rewind and start the whole thing again. There's no kind of chopping bits out and uh, making it work that way. And it did take much longer than I expected. I guess ultimately this project for me was about trying to produce an album in a different way, embracing limitations and exploring sound processing in the analog domain. The outcome certainly isn't perfect, but the journey has been an interesting one. As always, I'll be interested to hear what you've got to say about the project, so please let me know in the comments below, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.